over to the cloud. All right. Well, that was all of us. That was so sudden. <laughs> all right. Well, Gabby, just give us your first and last name and what you do. And sure. we'll go from there. All right. So my name is Gabriella Oso. And currently I've been teaching so far three years, going on to my fourth year as a special ed teacher in the Bronx, South Bronx. So it's been a passion of mine. Love it. And yeah, it's got it's got its, you know, ups and downs like anything in life, any career, but it's one of the most rewarding things, I think. So a good time and what kind of teacher so i'm a special ed teacher so essentially like um my classroom is an inclusion classroom so you have general education students and then special ed kids so what that is pretty much is students with ips students that have um you know specific learning needs and you know challenges that you know we have to address using their strengths and, you know, helping them um, grow, you know, they're no different to any other student. It's just, they have needs that are specific to them that as teachers, you just have to be able to accommodate that the best you can, you know, and, and try and give them the best type of education possible. So. All right. So what made you kind of want to get into like special education? Like, just getting to that field and, and, and dealing, you know, with um, that kind of department and that kind of like in group and like environment and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So it's funny, uh, growing up as a kid, I never liked school. <laughs> so the irony in me being a teacher is like hysterical. Um, but honestly, for me, what did it? My mom, she was um, a teacher's assistant um, at a school in Mount Vernon. And after high school I would just come off the train off of Fleetwood and then I would go ahead stay with her hang out and she would be with the kids and she worked in the kindergarten classroom and I just I absolutely loved it I loved kids and I knew I wanted to do something with kids I just didn't know what route so I played around with different careers I played around with different fields like going to like different career fairs and stuff like that but um it really wasn't until um I was teaching gymnastics at um place on executive boulevard and i had this one student he was special needs and um the mom like came up to me and was like you know was unsure if he'd be able to really like go into this because you know it was really hard but um i ended up teaching him and he was able to do one of the moves that i had taught him and mom got so emotional she was like i could just tell like you're meant to be working with kids like my son and things like that. And that was like so moving to me. And that was, I was maybe 17, 18 years old. And um, at that point I was like, okay, like now I'm like applying for college. Like I think education is like where I want to go into. And I've also like have like people close to me that um, have special needs. And so it hit a personal level too. And I was like, you know what? Like, I think this is my calling. And uh, you know, I did it, I, you know, in college I declared right away. I knew what I wanted to do. And I was one of the few people in my classes too that immediately like knew their major, like freshman year, I already like had declared um, and I was ready. I was, that was it. And since then, like, I just, I absolutely fell in love and teaching has been one of the most rewarding fields. And I guess a lot of the, you know, ups and downs that come with it is that teachers play such important roles in these kids' lives that, people don't really understand and you know we could dive a little bit into that too but the different roles that a teacher plays at least that I play every day is is honestly the biggest challenge that I think motivates me to keep going but also makes me take a step back and it's like well like this is this is a lot and it becomes a lot like on your mental on your physical like a lot of people don't realize the the emotional and physical like energy that you put in as a teacher and how much like you really need to like deal with so many different situations going on. Uh, Vernon, I'm, my allergies are getting to me. I don't know why. So I'll let you do the follow-up. 
Oh, the fuck. Yeah, Alex, you have to start crying, DT. Uh, it, it's that season. Oh, God. That? No. I'm, 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 no, I'm, I'm just saying it's a I'm, crying I'm season. Uh. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm the same way. No, but I find that very interesting, especially like with the whole special education and everything, yeah. because you talked about IEPs. And for those that don't know, especially DT, I had an IEP in high school. Oh, okay. Um, I had to go to a um, place out Dallas Ferry. Oh, well, it's not Dallas Ferry. It's um, Valhalla, New York. And mm -hmm. basically, I ended up uh, being diagnosed with APD, auditory process disorder. So yes. certain things, you might give me instructions. I might process it, you know, <laughs> a little bit slow and everything. Right. So I had an IEP from, you know, probably when I was, I was a youngin. I had to get extra time, so people yeah. get regular time. I get like an hour and a half and everything mm -hmm. that, that accommodates me and stuff. Right. So to hear like your story and then when, when DT was telling me, yeah, you know, Gabby, she does special education. I was like, wow, that's so like fascinating and everything because I get, you know, a lot of people don't like to want to deal with that field because I know it can get like very difficult, especially you're dealing with someone that has, you know, disability or learning disability. And everything and whatnot. And I think that that needs to be like a true essential part about it. And having people like you, you're making an impact on a whole bunch of people's lives and everything. Children, even families, parents, like the the uh, mom you just spoke of, and everything. And especially get doing that at a young age, it's like it's fascinating because I feel like a lot of us don't like want to get into that field or want to be doing that just because yeah. you got to have the patience and everything and whatnot. Yeah. Because I can relate to that now because I work at a daycare, so I'm a <laughs> teacher's assistant also. So, I but to do, like, special education, I think that's just, like, phenomenal as far as, like, what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, they always say it takes a special person to go into that. And, like, you know, I know it sounds corny, but it's true. There's so many aspects. And even just in education in general, there's so many aspects that people don't understand, right? Like, you know, you see a child and you just see what's on the outside, but you never know what's actually going on the inside. And that kind of goes and follows up with the different roles that a teacher plays. You know, you play not only the teacher, but you play the social worker, you play the psychologist, you play the nurse, you play the parent, you play all these different roles in these children's lives because at the end of the day, you never really know what goes behind closed doors. And, you know, obviously I work in the South Bronx, um, and, you know, I've had, you know, a lot of different things with students that I've had to kind of endure. And, you know, it, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to hear that because obviously, you know, I look at how I was raised. You know, I have my parents, I have my grandparents, my aunt, my uncles, my brothers, you know, and how supportive, you know, I, the, the family net that I have. And then seeing the different dynamics and seeing how some kids don't have that you know, you take that on, you take that on because they're missing that component. And, you know, then you add, okay, then the students has different special needs that you have to accommodate. Now it's like, okay, well, you know, you either have support from parents or you don't. And then there's another thing there that you have to juggle. So um, I think the stereotype, well, you know, teachers have off in the summer. It's, it's not true. There's, so many emotional things that go into it that um, really do become very draining. But, you know, it's stories like my kids saying, hey, Miss L, like you're the best or like writing cards for Valentine's Day. There's little things like that that really make me keep going, even on the days when I'm like, yo, like I can't like emotional breakdowns happens 24 seven. I'm like, I go on my car, like I just want to break down. I'm like, oh my God. But then there's like little things like my students do and just like come out to me or hug me. Like, oh, Miss you're the best. That is the type of stuff that's like, okay, God, like you can keep going. Like this is where you're meant to be. And then plus two, like, you know, hearing from administration, you're doing a good job, you know, from your peers, like your coworkers and things like that. Hey, like you're doing great. That's also like a lot of motivation too. But yeah, some teachers, you know, you do have the other ones that, don't care and that's the unfortunate part where you know then you see those kids kind of slip through the gaps right so and that's that's the heartbreaking part of the career too it's either you get a great teacher that helps you 
and then you get the ones that really like you said that really don't care and that's that's really tough what are the weekdays like on the way to the classroom and then the time outside spent the classroom spent of the class well, let me rephrase that what are the weekdays like in and outside of the classroom basically and also with grading homework or whatever responsibilities that you might have Okay, well, my first responsibility is 100% getting my Dunkin' in the morning because if I don't have coffee before I enter this classroom, I'm like, woo, like I need, I need my coffee first. But no, um, typical weekday, I mean, it varies on the day because everything's situational based. Like the day could change in an instant. We can have a great day going on. You know, we have reading period, uh, math periods, computer period. They have their specials. I have my prep. Other things that could be completely changed. We can have, I don't know, um, we have like uh, different shows that happen sometimes in the morning. Like my principal and the dean, they like to like do prep rallies for the kids. So like things can always change. We might have lockdown drills, fire drills, things like that. Um, I might be sent to PDs. Um, I was actually just at NYU because my classroom is part of um, uh, what's called PATH, and it's like an initiative in the city that helps with students with um, emotional disabilities. So I just had to go to NYU on Monday for a PD all day. So my day kind of ranges, but on a great day, normal day, kids come in, we do our morning meeting, I pick them up from breakfast downstairs. Um, they get into whether we start with literacy, kind of get into that, do all the fun stuff there. They have their computer period, come back, lunch. I like to include a lot of physical activity in my classroom. So um, when kids like get answers right or they're answering questions, like they'll do jumping jacks, they'll do push-ups. Like I have them moving around because the biggest thing, especially with my, not even just a special ed population, but the gen ed population too, like they need constant movement or else their attention span in the classroom is like out the window. Like you, you can't grab them. And like, even with the teachers with the best classroom management, if they're not getting that physical activity, like whether that's recess or that's movement breaks in between, these kids shut down. Like on tops, like depending on how old they are is usually how much their attention span is. So my kids are like six, seven, that's as long as their attention span is gonna be. So imagine trying to teach them two full periods, 90 minutes, and their attention span goes no more than like 10 minutes, it's a lot. But we try and keep it fun throughout the day. I try and do a lot of meditation, a lot of movement breaks, take them to the roof where we have the playground, play different sports, basketball, soccer. Like, I'm just one of those teachers, like, let the kids be kids. Like, they need to play. They need to get out. They need to get that energy out because if not, it affects the classroom and how they work, too. So, working with special education of uh, students and everything, Obviously, you have it to where, you know, like this is how I felt when I, when I, with me having mm -hmm. my IEP and everything. Sometimes you can get discouraged and everything as far as like learning, not knowing, and everything. And then when you're called upon, sometimes you kind of feel like others will judge you in a sense. And that sometimes can kill the confidence of some of these students and everything because either they're going to say something that, might be like the wrong they feel like it's the wrong answer or to be judged this that and the third mm -hmm. especially when you already have a learning ability and in a sense you're kind of like excluded even though for some it might not be like to a, to the fullest but at the same time period sometimes you can be excluded because you have this learning uh this ability and everything that's how sometimes i felt as a student where right. being special ed or being labeled as special ed you get kind of like excluded from like, as you said before, the general uh, education as far as all the, the students that don't have disabilities. So how is it for you trying to build the confidence of these students that you work with? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning of the year, I made it really clear to my kids, my expectations that I want for them, right? I don't ever want to treat someone differently because of things that they have going on, right? And the biggest thing that I always told my so my students is like, always believe in yourself. No matter what anybody says, always believe in yourself because at the end of the day, I'm proud of you regardless. And I was like, I don't care if, if 
you know, <laughs> you're, you're struggling on understanding your ABCs. If you got today the letters A and B right, great. Tomorrow we work on the next set. You know, it's, it's always, it's always a, a give and take with my kids. I always like to give them praise, but also still have that stern, like, hey, you still have to respect me. I'm your teacher, but always remembering that they are capable of anything. Because again, like you said, with the labels, immediately what happens is we label these kids. Oh, okay, well, their special needs are just going to, we're just going to, you know, forget about them. We're just going to push them to the side. And that's, that's not how it should be. Being in a special education classroom is not, okay, well, these are your students. These are my, that's not how it works. They are in a cohesive classroom. That's why you call it an ICT. It's an inclusion classroom for that reason, for them to be included with the rest of the kids because they, they aren't different from anybody else. And the biggest thing, and I've had students come up to me saying like, oh, so like I'm dumb or I'm stupid or I feel this. And it's like, no, you're not. I was like, look at all these things that you can do. Like sometimes like I'll show them things that they did previously from a month ago. And I'm like, look how far you've come. Like you are not dumb. I don't know who's calling you dumb, but you are not dumb. I'm like, you're my superstar. And like constantly giving them like positive reinforcements every day, positive, like, um, even if it's just like, you know, words, like great job today, you did so good. Like giving them, we also have like um, a treasure box system where if they earn a certain amount of stickers every day, they go to the treasure box or something like that. So even that, like, it's just, it gives them that confidence that they need every day. And I also like to put a quote every day on the board. Um, and it's like an inspirational quote. So when they come in, they see it in the morning and they're like, like what does this mean? This is, and we'll talk about it and we'll discuss it. And, you know, one of my kids said to me, he was like, Ms. Oso, like, I believe in myself. And like, that's something that I always say, like, since the beginning of September, like, we say it as a class, like, I believe in myself. And like, the kids like constantly like, say it to a T to the point that like, we were walking downstairs one day to lunch. And one of my kids, he like tripped, but he got back up and he's like, see, Miss, I believe in myself. I wasn't scared. I was like, okay. Like, it's so like, it sounds so stupid, but like, it's little things like that. I'm like, okay, like it's building their confidence from the ground up because again, like you don't know what backgrounds they've come from. So it's so important to instill those practices in them because, you know, a lot of these kids feel like they can't believe in themselves or they compare themselves to other kids and you know, um, they get made fun of or things like that. So I really try and from day one, like always give them praise no matter what, whether they did something wrong, they did something bad or they didn't. I always try to give them praise every day because they need that. And I believe in it wholeheartedly because my best teachers, at least growing up, like have always praised me. Even when I felt like I couldn't, I could have done better, always given me like, hey, like, I know you're a great student. I know you're smart. Like you got this. And that's what I try and do with my kids. And that's really what gives them the confidence to keep going. Yeah. Not, I'm going to let DT go in a minute, but like inclusion and everything, that's what I was a part of as far as in high school. And I think sometimes when you're with uh, other kids that don't have, like I said, uh, special ed or, or IEPs and everything, mm -hmm. they kind of get, they get, they get intimidated in a way because then the person that doesn't have IEP special ed, they're going to look at them and be like, like, are you crazy? They kind of look at you like you're not even a human being half the time period. They just look at you like, what are you saying? This, that, and the third. And I feel like that can sometimes kill the confidence and everything. And sometimes I feel like that can also carry, not even in the classroom sometimes, but I also can carry outside the classroom where just real world stuff. Because I sometimes kill my confidence, especially, you know, jokingly trying to talk to the female and everything or whatnot. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, 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 but yeah. Overall, um, uh, that's the whole whole thing about it. But 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 always building up their confidence and everything. I feel like that's the 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 biggest thing um about it and everything, especially when it comes to inclusion. But I'm like I'm gonna let DT go now because I know I've been talking a lot right now. <laughs> uh, ironically, I have two friends that I work with who are teachers we both we both coach together and actually one of them that's podcast guests so one of them is physical education and the other one i believe is social studies and they both will coach modify football and jv baseball respectively 
Yeah. So you, I mean, you're into sports. Uh, just talk about physical education and how it might get underrated in terms of its importance, because it just feels to me that sometimes you just need that 40 minutes of running around to just turn your brain off and let your yeah. body move. Oh yeah. I think, so it's funny if I didn't go into like teaching, like academic wise, I would have done PE. Um, but I think he's probably one of the most underrated parts of schooling, which I've never really understood because there's so much research that backs up that if kids aren't getting the physical output that they need to release all of that energy that they have built up, they are going to be more distracted in the classroom as opposed to students that are able to go outside able to have that 30, 40 minutes of playtime, able to get out, get the fresh air. Even like sometimes I see it like, and I hear stories like, um, like with like teacher who said I'm on where like some people like don't even get PE. And I'm like, how, how is it even possible? Like it's, it's just mind blowing to me because for me, like having the kids go outside, go to the playground, like letting them, go and run and do their thing is so important to them to their health <laughs> and like nobody understands that like teachers when we get the kids back from that they're so much more relaxed than they are if they don't have that resource to go outside because think about it too a lot of I mean at least my population of students they're in apartments you know they're in areas where they don't have a backyard you know so they rely on the parks outside. They rely on the sidewalk, the streets, you know, things like that. At school, where we have the resources, playgrounds, gyms, whatnot, even the hallways. Like, I've utilized my hallway, <coughs> excuse me, for the kids to do jumping jacks, to run up and down. Usually the rule is no running in the hallways. Yeah, I'm completely, I'm like, no, like, you need a movement break, run. Like, my... <laughs> my classroom like my kids like the teachers know on my floor like if I have the kids running it's because my kids like they need it like they need to get out or we'll take them to the room we'll take them to the playground like things like that because they I know like at least for my students they need that physical like energy to like go out and run because if they don't get that they're not going to pay attention to what I'm teaching they're going to be distracted they're going to distract the other kids and then the management itself in the classroom just crumbles. So, and also too, I was in a PD that there's research-based strategies that show to include, you know, within reading, within math, like movement breaks, you know, when a student gets something right, okay, everybody do 10 jumping jacks, go. It gets them engaged, it gets them moving, it promotes overall health. Um, my school also does a really good job, like promoting health and wellness in the school, um, really like understanding like good eating habits things like that and like I will say the physical education aspect of it is really great because they work really well and hands-on with the kids but I've seen you know and heard other stories where not a lot of schools get that so you know at least with me like I try and get my kids out there and active because like it's it's so important and I don't know why everybody kind of like puts a blind eye to PE I think they just see it as just free time because a lot of teachers are just solely academic, 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 instead of, hey, like, maybe the reason why my student is so antsy and doesn't want to pay attention is because they have so much built up energy and they have nowhere to let that go. So they're taking it out on all these other kids. No, I agree. I agree with that because, I mean, it's like even as, as adolescents and everything and whatnot, it's like, ain't nobody want to sit for no, like, 40 minutes listening to you talk, 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 and lecture and everything. Especially if you had, it was an ADHD or something like that. It, like you have like a sort of oh, attention yeah. span and everything. No one, no <laughs> one can do that or, or sit still, especially young children. They can't sit, they can sit still maybe for about, maybe I give it about maybe good 15 minutes at most sitting at a table or on the carpet and everything. But they got right. so much energy, joy, this, that, and the third. They're outside. They want to explore. They want to learn and everything and whatnot. So you can take that said physical education aspect of it and while we'll also do learning. Like, okay, you want to go outside. Like, uh, at the school I work at, we got a garden. So I was like, okay, let's go outside, get some fresh air, 
here, we can like plant something in the garden and everything and whatnot. Or it's like, okay, we can, you know, do a, a what's it, hopscotch, roll a dice and everything, right? Count how many hops you got to do. <laughs> That's one, you're, now you're getting right. physical as a kid because you're jumping and you're doing counting and everything. Right. Or it'll be like, hey, you know, like letter search. Okay, uh, we'll go outside. I'll take letters, whatever, hide them. You got to find them and everything. So you're moving around, but also you put in the, the alphabet, so you put them all in order. Yeah. Like different things. It sounds like you're a teacher too. Like you, like you got to go to school for it or something if you haven't already. Like you got the skills. Well, it's also like, like I said, skills, <coughs> experience, but also understanding this generation because we're this generation now is more like we're we're electronic generation. It's like nowadays, oh, yeah. you know, as you get older, you don't want to go outside. It's like the younger kids now, it's like they can't sit still for so long. Like I said, like you said, also so much built up energy and everything. They want to be outside or just moving and everything. And right. I think that's where sometimes other teachers they just want to lecture, teach, 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 teach. teach. But sometimes you got to give a, a break and maybe have class outside. I don't know. They still do that. but <laughs> I I have been saying it for so long, like being cooped up in the classroom. Like my room is known to be freezing because I have all the windows open because I'm like, we need air. Like I like if I could teach outside, I would because like it one is a change of scenery. I don't know if it would distract my first graders, but I think it would definitely be nice to have even if we did like at the end of the day like a meditation on the rooftop or something getting them out because like you said like no one even like as an adult even going to college like I hated hated sitting in classes and just hearing from a powerpoint and just listening I wanted to literally just like leave like I could not deal with that so like again putting your yourself in the shoes of a seven-year-old and and up too not just first grade just from my experience, but no one wants to be sitting and just talk, 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 listen to the teacher talk. You get tired of it. You get absolutely bored of it. So that's, yeah, I agree. Um, so just take us through this. This is actually more of like a personal note because I somehow forgot it. Just take us through your overcoming uh, various health issues and where you're at now mentally. Yeah. Um. So Essentially, my biggest goal originally was to get um, a job in a public school. Um, that was like my the biggest biggest goal of mine, and one of them was to get into um, the DOE, right? So, um, public school for New York City's. Um, and when I got it, I got called. I was teaching in a school in Westchester. I was a sub, um, and I got called. And in a matter of ten minutes, they called me back. I'm like, okay, you're hired. So I got hired October 1st. I, throughout the year, had some issues with my, what I didn't know was my thyroid at the time. And, you know, I kind of just let it go, played it off, like everything was fine. And then towards the time when I also got hired was when I started getting sick. And I was like, okay, like something's up. Sure enough, I uh, went for some tests. Uh, they found a nodule at the time on my thyroid. And um, then I went for a biopsy after that because it looked suspicious. And December 4th um, of 2020, I found out that I had thyroid cancer. So I was at that point two months in, not even, maybe a month and a half actually of teaching. And at the time I was like, Jesus, like how, like everything was fine. Like everything was going great. And now like, I just got like, just slammed with this. And that was really, really tough because, um, you know, you hear that word and you just automatically think like, that's it. Like I'm done. And at the time I was 24 when I was doing most and I'm 27 now. And, um, you know, that was also COVID, right? Like COVID hit. Um, a lot of things happened those like couple years, lost a lot of family members. Um, my dog died in April and then that happened. And it, it was just so many things that I didn't process and then had to deal with my health and then getting this new job. And, um, 
you know, I just, I just felt like absolute garbage. Like I just, um, really was not in the right mindset or mental space. Um, I went down a lot of dark paths mentally and, um, you know, I thank God, like my family, my friends, um, really were my biggest support system during that time because if it wasn't for them, I, I probably wouldn't be here today. And that's, you know, the gone honest truth. And, you know, it, it was really tough. Um, but luckily, you know, I've been three years in remission and everything's been great um, from that. And I was mostly upset because I had just got my job to be in person in school. And then because of what was going on, I had to figure out if I could be remote, um, but still keep my job. Luckily, my, my job, my school has been so great with with all of that and they were so understanding so they let me work remote for my first year of teaching um after that and um my first year back to school like in person was um last year so the 2021-2022 school year and uh, yeah I mean it's it's been you know an uphill battle since but um you know I think that's where the mental health awareness really comes um you know uh, to light especially as a teacher it requires so much mental energy and you know at that point I, I had to tell myself like listen like I'm not in a good place I need to take this time for myself still balancing work but I also really put an emphasis that year or 2021 2020 to really focus on my health and get myself back because essentially you know what you give out your kids also see that so if I wasn't giving my 100% my kids would feed off of that and that's the biggest thing in education. Like, no matter what's going on, you got to put all that to the side, unfortunately, especially when it comes to the students, because they feed off of it. They see it. So, um, you know, a lot of therapy, a lot of, you know, emotional um, battles with that. But it's it's been one of my biggest goals and biggest achievements, like going through that and, and being able to be here and... Um, being able to be present, not only with myself, but with the people around me that I, you know, that I care about. Yeah, that's the biggest thing right there. It's like, you know, kids, especially younger kids, they look to the teachers as like heroes, big brother, big sister, this, that, and the third, and everything and whatnot. And it's like when your mind isn't right and everything. And teachers, we're human beings as far as anything else. We go through a whole bunch of adversity this, that, and the third. And I feel like sometimes, like, nowadays in this generation, it's, like, teachers, yeah, I get sometimes the pay, but also it could be, like, sometimes you feel underappreciated and everything, yeah. especially going through the hard times and the hardship as far as anything and whatnot. Because nowadays you have some, some parents that look at teachers, like, we're supposed to be raising a child and everything. Mm -hmm. And I get, like, yeah, for 180-some days of the school year, it's like they're with us from, the, I guess, opening school to closing the school and everything. It's just a whole lot to where for teachers, when your mental health isn't where it's at and everything, that's when you need to take the time to kind of gather yourself and everything. And obviously May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So um, I did this, I think, one time before. From a scale, 1 to 10, 1 not being great, 10 being you know the happiest, where are you at mentally? overall oh um mentally i am definitely i'm not gonna say a 10 because i think there's always room for improvement right but i definitely give myself a, a nine five on that because where i was before is is a, a, a 180 from where i am now honestly and um i i i take a lot of credit you know within myself for that um, but truly like my, my friends and my family were like the, the reason why, like I'm, I'm able to be here talking to you guys and, and kind of sharing my experiences with them because, you know, I think the biggest thing that I learned was being my own support system too, because I think a lot of times, you know, you depend on other people for happiness or you depend on other people to help you. But at the end of the day, you know, 
it's it's really only you, you know, at, at the end of the day, and it, and you got to be the one to to be your own safety net. And that was the biggest thing that I that I learned, you know, and and you know, having still the support of my friends and family, and always knowing that they're always by my side, um, has been what's gotten me through a lot. But um, genuinely speaking, like I think from then to now, it's it's night and day. And I would say definitely a nine five nine six for sure mentally. What about you, DT? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at? <laughs> I could stop sneezing. I'd be at eleven. Uh, I never, I've never blown my nose so much in one year. Um, no, I'm back at, I'm back at a, a eight. I think my phone just went off. I'm back at an eight, but um, I just learned uh, a lot of your validation really has to be internal. Once you get that external validation, people will let you down. So. Uh, right. Not, not to say about everybody, but uh, you know, right. something something that you yeah, something that you know people specifically have to have to uh, have to work on is that internal validation. And uh, I'm very uh, stubborn. I don't know. I, I probably runs in my family as I uh, I'm throwing under the bus. Oh, but, same. Yeah. So uh, once you once someone's in that fixed mindset for so while, like, and you kind of you can't get them to like get off their a certain mindset, like you can't really reprogram years years of that uh within within minutes it's really a long it's really a long journey um in that uh sorry as like as i was just, as you were like talking i was thinking like whether or not you like watch abbott elementary so that's like a new sensation now abbott elementary mm. of course yeah it's hysterical seen. but they do such a good job at describing what it is to be a teacher and the struggles anything from like the copy machine not working to like real life issues to you know things going on with the kids and you know adding like the dark humor to it but it's it's true like it's um and actually the population um of that school I think it's based in Philadelphia if I'm not mistaken um and it's very comparable to you know a lot of the backgrounds that I've seen at least working in the South Bronx and it's it's true like you know the the resources that you know one would get in more of an affluent county or an affluent school district is going to be way different than you know what you would get in a school that maybe doesn't have that many resources so Abbott Elementary kind of you know is is a good in between of of looking at all those different angles of of not really having the resources or teachers having to do everything out of pocket you know so um it's it's definitely um one of my favorite shows right now for sure all right i'll say about my mental health i say 7.5 8 always room for improvement and everything yeah. i think uh thing for me <laughs> is more thinking about the next step going forward where life is gonna uh take you and everything because life never gives you directions of course on where to like really travel left, right, going forward and everything and whatnot. But um, overall, for you as a teacher, where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years doing your know, teaching, whether it's special ed or anywhere? Like, where do you see yourself in five, 10 years? Well, so this coming up school year, I'm going to get my tenure. So that's a goal of mine that you know, that's the next step, right? That'll be within the year, um, year and a half. And so I think looking forward, um, I, I've i always, I've always wanted, I'm very much the type of person, I can't stay still in just one thing for the next like 30 years. I see myself moving up um, and moving up in the sense of going into administration. Um, and I think that is my biggest goal right now, but my mini goal is first getting my tenure, getting that under my belt, and then going for my administration because that's that's something that I I'm I'm really pushing for um because I see a lot of leadership in myself and that's not to be like oh look at me I, I truly see the leadership side of it and in, in me and you know I I think I have what it takes to do that. Um, specifically, assistant principal, that would be a goal of mine. Um, so hopefully in the next five, 10 years, it would be assistant principal um, because that's that's something that I've, I've always wanted to do and wanted to go into. But I think 
the experience of classroom teacher is what I really need first before, you know, getting myself situated in that. But um, administration is is definitely my goal and what I'm currently, you know, going back to school for. So. All right, so just just to wrap it up, uh, I would see it because I have you on Snapchat and Insta and the like. Uh, God, sorry, I'm near the Westchester Airport. I'm not really, but I could like hear the planes going back and forth, so I can't, I can never unhear it as I'm talking. That like, you can't hear it through, through the headphones, so annoying. Um, it's fun. Long to deviate a little bit. My dog barks at it, so that's why I can't unhear him now. Oh, it's fine. My dog barks at everything. Um, see, so yeah, it's just crazy. Um, oh, so, so I see, you know, I see like, you know, a little bit of a Snapchat, obviously it's not fully real life. Um, so just kind of get into like, you know, what you kind of do in your free times, hanging out with friends, uh, getting active on the weekends and such, and we can wrap it up there. Yeah, sure. Um, so currently, um, what I like to do on the weekends, at least on my free time, um, that I have, which is very minimal sometimes, but um, I love, honestly, like really going for runs. That's like, always been my thing. I did track and field um, all my life. And I mean, I also played civic or basketball, different sports like that. But actually like going to like collegiate level on um, track and field was my thing. And so keeping up with running, that's been one of my biggest things. So I try to go for runs in the morning on the weekends. Um, I try to include a lot of more like meditation now with myself um, and just trying to get myself at a point where I am ready to take on the day. Um, I know that kind of sounds corny, but it's true. Um, I kind of need that <laughs> mental like space for myself before I like venture out and go into like my social life, right? With friends and stuff like that. Um, but it's something that I do for myself that I need. It's kind of my way of like decompressing all the stress that's been um, previously. I also just took up um, volleyball, uh, my friend, asked me to join his volleyball team so i'm there in the marinic on thursdays so it's beach volleyball that's been really fun um what else um yeah and then just going out um let's see this weekend I have a couple weddings well i have a wedding and then going to the shore for memorial day weekend so that's gonna be fun um and yeah just like hanging out with friends having a good balance um Nothing really else is coming up. Just trying to get ready for the summer. I've made a model for myself to travel more this year. So if I don't do summer school, I'm definitely going to try and travel a lot more. There's a lot of different concerts that are coming. Um, I got my Drake tickets for what was supposed to be for Miami. But now it just got pushed to September. So unfortunately, it's not going to be a summer concert. But um, that's coming up in September. What else? I'm going to a couple concerts. I'm trying to get Taylor Swift tickets. Fun fact, I was on Z100 this morning. I was color 100 and I had to guess the sound for Taylor Swift to earn Taylor Swift concert tickets for this Friday and completely butchered what the sound was. It was like, it sounded like the Dell dial up tone. Like that's what I wanted to say. Like if you remember like bringing it back, like the, you know what I'm talking about? Like that old school Dell dial up tone. That's what it sounded like, but I totally like butchered it. So we'll see. We're going to try and get tickets on Friday, but yeah, that's really it. Just traveling, meditating, staying hydrated, you know, keeping it real. Self-care is the best care. And yes, teachers do have life yes. too for all you students that are like, wow, Miss Gabby, like you do all this stuff. Yeah, Miss <laughs> Gabby does all this stuff. That's great. Yeah. And a glass of wine occasionally. Much needed. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that neither. <laughs> Exactly. Gotta, I'm, I might gotta go white with it. I don't know. Red is just too. Difficult. I mean, for or I like white or red. Like in the summer, I'm more of like a white, and then like closer like fall, I like winter. I like the reds. I don't know. A good prosecco, rosé. You know. What did I get? Oh, I, I might have gotten ginger uh, prosecco for a little bit. I couldn't remember who I got, but like. But um, Earl Stevens has his own, like, uh, he has his own brand. So I said, oh, like, man, let's check this out. Oh. Yeah, Prosecco. Um, they they butchered, like, however, they, they butchered, like, they were supposed to send it. Like, the way they sent it, it was just, like, really, really bad. So it took, like, forever. But what are you going to do? All right, True. Gabby. This was actually, yeah, this is actually a lot better. Because, like, 
if I couldn't pause myself or mute myself on Instagram live, I was just going through it this hour. But you know, got to got to learn even more about you. We've known each other for almost two years now, so got to learn yeah, no, more. best two years of my life, each. Two years. Hey. Have to. And it was nice up. meeting you too. Yes, it was nice meeting another uh, a fellow teacher and everything, and learning more, yeah. and you being a, a huge inspiration and, and, a, and, a, oh, and a hero and we need more people like you caring teachers out there that you know oh, you. always building up the confidence of those especially like me with IEP special education and everything or whatnot and this was I would say like the, one of the best conversations I have had and everything right. along with other other previous guests and everything but yeah it's like it's like very interesting to hear your story and how you're making a difference in society. Thank you so much. Honestly, I appreciate it. it. It means a lot to be able to talk about it and, you know, have people, you know, just listen in and educate themselves on that too. For sure. Cause I know giving it, give your teachers appreciation. I know I think it was like last week was teachers appreciation and nurse week. So I'm giving out roses, flowers. The only thing I can't give out right now is wine, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Can't wait to sneak one on the campus. No, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only person that can get expelled after I graduate. Uh, all right. So yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, try to edit this, send this over. But this was definitely a, a good one. So, uh, you know, and just stay alive in the Jersey Shore. I guess. Well, I'll talk to you before then as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Let me know, and I'll definitely share it, and you know, spread the word about your guys's podcast. I, I was kind of, uh, I was watching a little bit um about what you guys like have been like some of the guests and stuff like that and honestly it's like really interesting and um I, t I said to DJ I was like yo like I like hit me up like I'd love to like talk about this because I, I love like listening to people that really care and like getting to like know about different not only just like professions but just like understanding and educating and like being open to hearing people's opinions about things and just like, honestly like having like this discourse is is something that not everybody's always open to so it's nice to have that and to like listen to podcasts that are like open to doing that well it's also nice for when dt came with the idea about doing this podcast and everything and <laughs> pardon me how to like really do it and yeah we're doing off of zoom and and instagram sometimes maybe not in person studio quite yet but it's always great to kind of give especially like middle class people like people you don't hear about. I know a lot of people do podcasts with celebrities and everything cool, but to kind of give the people like kind of their own platform to kind of share their stories, you know, your local yeah. teachers, local YouTubers and everything. We had Max Pierce and everything, athlete business, ginger athlete business and everything. Like it's, it's, it's right. wonderful to have people that are just, you know, basic people that you probably, like, you know, grew up with, you know, but you don't really, like, know, know exactly what they're doing and their right. interests and everything and whatnot. So it's always great for us to kind of give, like, the local people wherever kind of their own platform to kind of share their story and everything because you really don't know about a person until they really want to open up. And also the fact that to give a person a platform where they feel comfortable opening up also. Right. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I think it's so important because, like you said, like, a lot of it is always like celebrity interviews and there's nothing wrong with that either, but like most of, of the working population and, and the people that really like move this country are, are <laughs> the middle class, you know? So it's, it's really important to kind of get a feel of, of all that and, and, you know, appreciating that too, you know? And yeah, thanks. I appreciate you guys giving me this platform to talk a little bit about everything. No, thank you. Right, thanks, Gabby. Give your teachers flowers. Not every day. I will. <laughs> Whatever. That'll be a lot of fun. No, we can do it every day. Teachers. Where are you going to put them? Huh? In the, make a garden. You, yeah, make a garden. That's so true. That's, so that's no cool. We have a garden at our school, so let me know. <laughs> Send me some seeds. I'll plant them out. Some rose bushes. Take a couple of years, oh, yeah, but, you I'm know. Well, I'm I'm gonna close I'm gonna close this out right here, and this is what I put on the back of a T-shirt at my job and everything and whatnot. 
I just put like a little quotation in the back and I'll let DT kind of log us off. Teachers plant the seeds so our knowledge can grow like trees. Oh, I love that. We'll end it there. All right, so I'll send this over to you guys. Uh, we appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, I don't know why. That was a really anti anticlimactic. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys. Um, appreciate Go it. Rangers. Derek, go Rangers. Let's go. Next season. That's it. Next year we win the cup. 100%. We taking Stanley home with us. Mr. Stan. All right. I'll see you guys. All righty. All righty. All right.